What's going on, everybody? Zach Rosenblatt back again with Mike K for another episode of the Free Agency No Huddle Show. Um, the Eagles made a huge splash this morning. They traded for Darius Slave, the Detroit Lions. They traded a third round pick. It was their third round pick, not the compensatory pick, and a fifth round pick, which was also theirs. And they got Darius Slay back. Signed him to a three year extension worth fifty million. That's going to tack on to the ten million he was already going to make this year at the Lions. So sixty mil over four years, on like a per year basis, I believe. Like the the extension is uh, greater per year than the contract Byron Jones got. But the, this is a big splash. This is a guy the Eagles have been interested in since at least the trade deadline, as far as we know. I, by all reports, they balked at the asking price at that time. It clearly went down. Mike, what what were your initial reactions when this trade news came out? I mean, Eagles fans wanted pomp and circumstance. They wanted a better cornerback. They didn't want to part with their first or second round pick. They got what they wanted. I mean, I think some can complain about the length of this deal or the overall money of the deal um, because people were fixated on Byron Jones and getting a free agent without giving up compensation. But to me, you know, Darius Slay's playmaking value makes him a better cornerback, in my opinion. The Eagles had some luck with not giving up, you know, huge plays de- down in the stretch in the 2017 season. But they also created some turnovers as well because the pass rush was so good. The Eagles needed a playmaking corner. They haven't had a playmaking corner since Asante Samuel. And for what it's worth, Slay is a better one-on-one man cover corner than than Asante was. Asante was a great uh, gambler. He was very smart, very good at his job, a very good corner. But Slay, from a from a physical standpoint, from a matching up one-on-one standpoint, I just think there's a lot of talent there. He's coming off a down year, but he also was hampered by a hamstring injury throughout, uh, or at least most of the season. Uh, he's only 29. The Eagles basically get him for a four-year deal, but I feel like we have to look at the language of the contract, but I'd imagine they'd be able to get out after two years because even if they aren't touching the first year of his deal, or I guess you would say the last year of his Lions contract, they're going to give him a massive signing bonus. So let's say they he makes 10 this year as a base salary, and then he gets $10 million in a signing bonus. That's $20 million guaranteed right there if that's the way the contract is put out. So then he would only have $10 million left, and that would be guaranteed for next season. Um, to me... This is a smart deal because it sets the Eagles up in several different ways. They still have a third round pick. They still have a fifth round pick. So it's not like they're losing out in those rounds. They still have eight picks overall. But on top of that, they have a number one corner. And he's not signed for very long, but he's signed for the rest of his prime years. And I think that that's very, very smart on how he's part. Um, you know, some t- I think with Byron Jones, it was a matter of, listen, even if he made an equal offer, they were still losing because Florida has no income tax or uh, has no state tax. Byron Jones got his money. He got his bag and he's got a long term bag and there's way more guarantees. So I think the Eagles did the right thing. I mean, all things considered, I gave it a B grade uh, in my right immediate reaction write up. Um, and I, I stay there even after all the new information of them not touching his initial deal with the contract. Yeah, so just just to go through uh, some of the kind of player that they're getting, like you said, he's uh, 29 years old. Um, in Jan- he just turned 29 in January, so it's not he won't. Yeah, turn- January 1st actually. He was born on New Year's Day. How do you like that? Yeah, but uh, so he's been a Pro Bowler each of the last three years. 2017 was his breakout year. He had eight interceptions that year. He was an All Pro. 26 pass deflections. It was pretty ridiculous. It's kind of when people kind of realized who the guy was. Um, he's had at least uh, 13 pass breakups every year since his rookie year. And his rookie year was the only year he played for Jim Schwartz, actually. But Jim Schwartz was the head coach and drafted him. So he obviously knows Slay quite well and scouted him and all that stuff. Um, last season, statistically, was one of his worst seasons by most accounts. I mean, if, if you look at just his PFF grade, which I know you can you – can, you know, question or whatever their methods, but he, he was 97th overall grade and his coverage grade wasn't very good. And he gave up 600 something yards total, only three touchdowns. He is targeted. Uh, he does cover the opposing team's number one receiver and he generally shuts them down pretty well. Um, and yeah, like you said, he's a playmaker, you know, he's had, he has 19 interceptions first career. He's had at least two every year. 
Byron Jones, for as good as he was, he didn't have any interceptions the last two years. And, you know, the Eagles needed a corner that can go and get the ball. Um, I, 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 re- I read your great thing. I, I thought you were going to be higher on it. I actually agreed with the B. I think it, there, there's de- like it's he's definitely an upgrade. He helps them right now. Um, he's a really good player. He's better than any of the guys they've played, like you said, probably since Asante Samuel. But I, I do think there are like reasons to like at least not give it a complete A, like you didn't, because I mean he like he's he's heading towards thirty. That he showed some signs of decline last year, and you're paying him a lot of money. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think you're on point. You you know me. I'm normally the more uh, optimistic, optimistic yeah. guy of of us of the two of us. But I, you know, I do see the downside here. Uh, you know, a third round pick is a third round pick. You know what I mean? Um, and you parted with that. And if you were willing to spend that money, maybe spend a little bit money, more money to hold on to your draft picks. That said, you know, I mean, Slay's only like a year older than Jones. Um, and Jones has only played like, I think it was like 500 less snaps. So it's not like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like... The age isn't that big of an issue. Age isn't my issue. The compensation really isn't my issue. Is the contract large? Yes. And compiling all that, sure. But when you look at this outside of a vacuum, Hargrave and and Slay are massive upgrades for this this pass defense. Look, Malcolm Jenkins, very good player, very good blitzer, very good run stopper. He was not good in coverage last year. I don't care what the grades were, whatever. The safety struggled last year. Having a pass rusher at the one technique in Hargrave and having a number one corner will make this team better. Um, it also kind of takes some pressure off of moving Jalen Mills to safety, which from my, if what I've, I've gathered is a very legit thing. Now, we don't know if he's going to be the starting strong safety. We don't know if they're going to move Rodney McLeod to strong safety and have him play Jalen Mills be the single high guy. Or what have you, he could be the third safety for that matter. We don't know what they're going to do at number two cornerback. But I do think that Jalen Mills will be put set up better to succeed in the safety role with a number one corner at, at the helm. Yeah, you know, I, I think first and foremost, we should say having a guy like Slay who doesn't really give up big plays, which is a far cry from the guys they've uh, employed there the last few years, which is kind, sure. was, kind of, was kind of the biggest weakness. Like that'll help the defensive line finish plays maybe a little more than they did last year. Uh, I think you'll see that being a big impact. But like you said, it, you kind of alluded to this, but I, this is another case where I feel like it's how we judge this trade kind of still depends on the other moves that Howie makes. Because as you're saying, like I'm still skeptical in Jalen Mills being a full-time safety if they make him like the starter opposite McLeod. I think that's a risky proposition. They haven't added any linebackers. Um, like th- there's – they need a safety. They need, who's their number two corner as we sit here right now? Avante, Avante, I guess. Yeah, Avante. And he didn't have a great year last year. Like I, I'm, I'm high on Avante. I think you are too. But he didn't have a good year last year. I don't think that's even debatable. Um, so they need to figure out if these young corners are good enough to line up next to Darius Slayer. If they need to go and draft somebody, or if they can trust a rookie, and they need to figure out the other safety position, which is a very important one. Because even, even with Malcolm last year, you saw when he made mistakes. That was what big plays happened. Um, maybe Darius Slay can cover for some of that, but like the safety is an important part of this defense. So that's going to be interesting. And, and they still haven't added any receivers. So my, my main thing is as they sit here right now, I don't see them as like a contender this year. And you're, you're trading for a guy with the idea that you're, you don't, you don't trade for a 29 year old corner and pay him 16 and a half million a year, unless you think you can compete for a Super Bowl this year. Not as they, as the roster looks right now, I don't see that there's still time, but I'm that that's where I, I guess if you're going to play devil's advocate, that's where I would. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, I I think they're a playoff contender. I definitely do not see them as a Super Bowl contender right now. They have just far too many openings. Yeah. Uh, that said, I've been told that they are still looking really heavily at the safety market, which hasn't developed really the way anybody thought it was. There's a lot of one-year deals going around, and there's yeah. still guys out there. Tony Jefferson is a guy who's coming off an injury that I would pay very, very close attention to. He was cut by Baltimore earlier this offseason. Has the Andy Weidel connection. Yeah, yeah, he has the Andy Weidel connection. He is a guy that – actually, I think he got there after Andy. Oh, okay. Uh, But that said, he played a similar rover role in Arizona to what Malcolm Jenkins played in Philly. 
he can be a dime linebacker. He can be a strong safety. I think he's a guy that makes a lot of sense. He's under 30 as well. Um, he, only, he only played five games last year, we should say. Right. He tore his ACL. He actually had a very similar ACL injury to Carson Wentz. That said, though, he suffered an injury earlier on in the season. Uh, I've been told that he's making really good progress. I've seen stuff on Twitter where he's recovering and everything like that. So he's an interesting guy. Will Parks, who I've talked about incessantly, is still out there as well. He could make sense as a strong safety. Same Von Bell. I'm sorry? Von Bell, Von yes. Bell. You know what's weird is Von Bell was a New Orleans Saints draft pick. He went to Ohio State. He's kind of a middle <laughs> free agent. It's almost like history repeating itself. If he's yeah, the Eagles. I know. It feels too perfect for him to yeah. come here. Yep, for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then, I mean, just to keep thinking ahead, like even the receiver market hasn't played out like at all. Has Have any receivers really signed besides like minor guys? Uh, Robbie Anderson has not signed, which that's, is, what, that's what I'm saying. All, only no, I know, but what, you know, what's funny about that. What's so, uh, what's really funny it, to me is that everybody who talked about his market, you and I were the two people that kept downplaying his market. I mean, I'm sure other people did. I, I don't mean to sound like other podcasts where they act like they're the only people that had their own yeah. ideas because there are a few of those in Eagles. Dumb. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, we, I didn't think he was worth $10 million. He is a, he runs three routes. Uh, he's also never been over a thousand yards. I think he has one 900 yard season. Um, it says a lot that the jets haven't re-signed him yet. And he's been available to negotiate for four, four days. Uh, so that's puzzling on his part. I'm wondering if he wants to – he says that he wants to – he's open to returning to the Jets, which is smart of him, which is where what I would do if I were him, um, if he's getting offered less than $9 million. Uh, it does kind of feel like a Ronald Darby market where everybody thought Ronald Darby would cash in and then he didn't really have a market, so he re-signed with the Eagles for like $5 million. Yeah. Um, yeah, that ha- that's been slow to adjust. Prince of Mucamera, um is still out there at cornerback. I think he would be an excellent compliment um, to uh, what they have right now. Uh, you know what? Actually, stepping back into the Darius Slay thing, something I wanted yeah. to talk to you about, um, and I mentioned this in my my grading, now that Slay is here, given the investment they've made in him, Russell Douglas and Sidney Jones are both expendable. Like, they were expendable yeah. before the trade. Now they're really, really expendable. You're going to give up on one of those guys. They're entering the final year of their contract. Avante Maddox is better and cheaper. Um, Craven LeBlanc, for that matter, deserves to be on the field more. Yeah. So even if you don't go out and sign Prince of Mucamera and you just draft a guy to develop, I mean, Avante is going to be the number two over the two of them for sure, based on how Jim Schwartz has treated both of them. Um, I mean, and then maybe you can get a fifth round pick back for Razul. Right, exactly. Yeah. There are tons of teams that need number two and number three corners. Um, he's a very good, in base formations, he makes sense as, or in nickel situations, he makes sense as an outside guy. So like a team that signs somebody like Logan Ryan, who spends the majority still on the market, by the way, which is surprising. Right, Voorhees native. That would be yep. interesting as well, especially if you like Avante on the outside. Yeah. Now, that's something we should talk about later. We'll get to that later. But anyway, focusing on Slay and his impact on the other corners, if a team other than the Eagles signs Logan Ryan, he's a guy who spends significant time at nickel, but in base, he's on the outside. Maybe you want Rasul to be that third guy. He's not the, the nickel traditional. Normally the nickel guy is the third guy, but in a tradition, in a non-traditional sense, he'd be the outside corner in nickel situations. Um, which is kind of how they used him earlier, his first two years when there were injuries. So, yeah, I mean, I think Rasul Douglas is a guy who should have some trade value. He's got very good size. I feel like he's been poorly used here. Um, they don't really use him to press very often. He's a press man corner. Um, I don't think he's been a failure by the front office. I think they've put him in, a, the coaching staff's put him in a pretty tough position. Uh, and he did, he did solid in 2018 when they needed him somebody to come in. Yeah, I thought he was pretty good. I mean, I thought they Nick Foles him. They they allowed him to play his game a little bit more. You know what I yeah. mean? Like they catered to him a little bit. But again, I, I think if you're the Eagles, you need to get some of that trade value back. I I, I would want to go in 
with at least oh wow uh rams making brandon cooks available for trade i know the eagles have shown interest in him before yeah no. hard pass hard hard pass the guy's been traded twice in three years i would and, not and, he wasn't, and, and he's like injured now and it wasn't good last year so. although it, it probably would be less awkward now that uh malcolm's you know, gone malcolm's gone yeah hey so remember that time so, where have, so we wouldn't have ptsd every time he saw him walking by yeah. Hey, remember that time where you cost me a Super Bowl appearance and, you know, and basically lost the game for uh, – basically beat us because I was injured? Yes. Yeah, that was – Yeah, the, yeah. But, uh, so, so what do you think the Eagles do at corner now? Do you think they just draft somebody or do you think they get a low price veteran? With – I think the perfect compliment for him is A.J. Terrell uh, from Clemson. Yeah. I really, really like this kid. Yeah, this so so second, round, second round pick on him kind of thing? Yeah, second round um, – Second round would make sense to me. They have got to land a wide receiver in the first round. From what I've gleaned, and I, I actually heard this yesterday, wide receiver has always been a draft priority for them. They were never yeah. going to go after Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper was way out of their market. So, um, And I think that's the smart approach, to be honest with you, especially when you look at the contract that he got from the Cowboys, which is basically an option-to-option deal. Uh, I think Tom Pelissero said it's the most simple contract he's ever seen uh, <laughs> because it's basically like his cap number is 20 million dollars every year yeah. there's there's basically no dead money they're taking the 20 million dollar hit every year which is something um anyway um you know i've heard also that they have some interest in the defensive end market we'll see where that goes i don't know if it'll be a big deal but there's some guys out there that make sense in a rotation um you know, I do think they're going to add a, a veteran wide receiver uh, again to G Sharp from from the Titans makes a ton of sense to me. Well, uh, Perry, Perryman yeah. doesn't seem to have a huge market right now either. So yeah, it's very interesting. Um, one, one guy I'm surprised that hasn't been picked up by anybody is Emmanuel Sanders. Maybe he's asking for too much money, but like if if you can get him for a reasonable one year deal, I'd even look into that honestly. <laughs> Uh, I don't know anything about that, but I would say yeah. if you look at it from the optics of his age, maybe teams want to, um, you know, really have that physical with him because he yeah, had, I mean, had that's true. Yeah. He had, I think he had an ACL and an Achilles during his career. So, uh, you know, that's fair. I mean, maybe that could be. I don't know if that's the reason why, but that would be logical. Um, you know, t- you know, now that you're covering the Giants, I hate to bring that up, but <laughs> when you look at those you have a unique perspective when you look at how both teams are handling free agency and trades and everything who's winning the offseason right now between those two teams hmm, that's a good question I, w- I will say this retroactively just keeps making a leonard williams trade look even worse because dave right. gettleman g- gave up more for leonard williams who they now have to overpay because of they gave up so much for him um i don't know the, the giants are like the one thing that is confused me about the Giants is they need offensive line really badly, and they, the only guy they signed is Cameron Fleming from the Cowboys, who is at best a swing tackle. But I, they've weirdly really like been smarter about like understanding where they're at in their rebuild, so all their contracts are front loaded. Um, so they signed James Bradbury to a three year deal. They signed Blake Martinez to a three year deal. They signed a bunch of guys to one year deals. But I don't know Blake Martinez. I, I like him. He's a Tucson kid. They should have probably signed Corey Littleton over him at. I'm sorry, you, being, you cut out. Who did you say you like? Uh, Blake, Blake Martinez, Martinez. But, but he, uh, but Corey Littleton was around the same money, and he's better in pass coverage. Anyway, the oh my the god, it's being, not even close. Yeah, 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 yeah. The point being, like the Giants, I think they know they're not going to be contending for a year or two. So in that sense, I think they're making the right moves. They just need to do a better job of like building around Daniel Jones. But to answer your question, I think the Eagles probably are having the better offseason, but they that depends on what they do wide receiver, honestly, because that's still their biggest need. Yeah, I mean, and you know what? They've set themselves up to where, you know, they can accomplish that need pretty easily or uh, solve that problem relatively easily in the draft from a from a prospect standpoint. Um, for me, like, I actually kind of like what the Giants are doing from the standpoint of how they're structuring contracts. Like, they're yeah. not – they're saying, look, we're going to gamble early – so we're not messing with the future and that sig- but in turn that signifies to me that dave gettleman's going to be around for a while yeah because uh, yeah, he- yeah. Other- otherwise he'd be signing guys 
to huge contracts right now to get them here kind of thing. Right. He wouldn't care about the next GM's cap situation. Yeah. Um, like, to me, there's – I don't like any of their signings, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, Fl- uh, Fleming's a terrible signing for what they well, I, I, I like the uh, – they signed Kyler Fackrell to, like, a, a short-term deal. Yeah, he's that's, a nice that's like a low, That's like a low-risk, high-reward type signing. But, yeah, I mean, there's nothing that, like, blows your socks off or anything. I mean, the Bradbury signing, I think Bradbury's going to come back down to earth a little. Uh I also think their evaluations of corners speaks for itself. Um, you know, they drafted Sam Beal. DeAndre Baker's been a nightmare. Uh, don't have much to show for it. They had to go for this. I mean, they had to make this deal. They had to get a better corner. But yeah, I also don't necessarily like that Gettleman's the guy who brought him into Carolina, too. <laughs> uh, that kind of Joe Douglas-esque. Uh, management is not smart, in my opinion, for the most part, especially yeah. with a younger guy. Um, I, I will say, I, I think we both agree that the Eagles had the better upgrade at corner by getting Darius Slay. Oh, I don't even think it's close. Yeah. Uh, and then when you factor in – here, let's say this, okay? So you look at Javon Hargrave and Slay for a third and fifth. Let's just do that. Let's let's play with that, right? That's not actually what happened, but let's say, let's play with that. Versus Leonard Williams and DeAndre, or er, and uh, excuse me, and James Bradbury for a third and fifth round pick. Those obviously didn't happen, but when you combine those two moves, that's basically what happened, right? Yeah. Which one are you taking? Uh. So Bradbury and Williams for a third and a fifth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Obviously, the Eagle side. Yeah. yeah like it's just. Um, I know it's not as cut and dry as that, but like... I mean, I mean, the Leonard Williams trade is one of the worst ones I've seen in a long time. It just made no sense. But. Well, it, 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 it's like compounded by the fact that then they had a gun put to their head, so they had a franchise. franchise. Yeah. I mean, that's bizarre to me. Um, the only trade that I think's turned out worse from last year is the Jalen Ramsey trade. Because, yeah, yeah he's got one more year left on his deal, but you're going to have to extend that dude for eons because he basically... He Laramie Tunsil's kind of in the same spot. I mean, they have one year left on their contract, but you traded yeah. multiple very high picks for them. Woo! Dang, girl. <laughs> Dang, uh, girl. Yeah, I mean, look, wrapping up this in a bow, the Eagles didn't give up a first-round pick. They didn't give up a second-round pick. They paid pretty much the money they allotted for Byron Jones. Yep. To, you know, I mean, to Darius Slay, maybe a little bit more, whatever. Um, I think this is a win for them. And you know what? You brought it up earlier. They were interested in, in him and balked on the price last year. The price clearly dropped. They could have traded the second round pick if they, if they, you know, pressed and brought in slay and they probably still would have lost against the Seahawks. Yeah. They won the division and still went to the playoffs, but you know, if Carson's not there, I still don't think they, you know, if, if everything else is the same, I still don't think they beat the Seahawks. So, you know, I, you, you gotta re- at least respect their patience that things kind of worked out. I know a lot of people were up in arms that nothing happened yesterday. Um, That's why you gotta be patient in free agency, especially with Howie. Well, and it's easy for us as objective observ- observers to, to say that. I understand the yeah. passion and the concern and the frustration because really the Eagles made it sound like they were going to ball out in free agency. And, yeah. you know, but here's the thing in perspective, right? There was two top cornerbacks on the market. They were interested in one of them. There are 32 NFL teams. The Eagles were basically 16th in cap space. So f- to expect them to land that guy, your expectations probably shouldn't have been that high. The same could be said a wide receiver where there was one top wide receiver in 32 teams, and he was dead set on returning to Dallas um, to the point where he turned down a ton more money from the Redskins. So again, I think when you look at this overall situation, the Eagles made the best of a bad not even a bad situation, an awkward situation. Yeah, sure. Malcolm Jenkins is gone and he was a terrific leader, uh, but his play definitely dropped off last year and you're in a spot to where you can cut corners and safety because you're paying corners, which 
is how most of the league functions. Most of the league functions by addressing corner and defensive tackle and defensive end. They don't really pay safeties significant amount of some money. Like Jamal Adams, yes, pay the dude. But like when you overpay for Landon Collins last year, what did you get out of it? That that's kind of where I'm at. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, and you can see the contract that Jenkins signed with the Saints, which I think he'll even be making less than he was with the Eagles, right? Well, he's making more per year, but if he, I doubt he sees the full four years of that contract. Yeah. So, yes, in, 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 in theory, you're correct. Like, he's – I mean, maybe he just wanted a change of scenery. Maybe he was frustrated. This yeah. is just speculation. Maybe he was just frustrated by the lack of, uh, of wiggle room to sign a contract. Uh, he and Sean Payton have always maintained their relationship. They seem to like each other very, very much. Um, I think Payton's on record of saying that one of his biggest regrets was letting uh, yep. Jenkins walk out. 20, the he, said that, he said that in 2018 before the Saints beat them uh, 100 to 0 or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. So, like, again, I think there's something to be said about familiarity and there's something to be said about wanting to change the scenery. Sometimes when you're underpaid or underappreciated, you just want to go back to where the grass was greener at one point. Malcolm had a phenomenal Eagles career. Like, there's no question about that. They don't win the Super Bowl without him. If they trade him for Brandon Cooks, the Eagles are probably a one-and-done playoff team at best. Yeah, that's, uh, one of the, that's one of those like, ultimate what-ifs. Right. So, like, he's going to get his, his number retired, I would imagine. I would imagine – no one wears 27 next year or this season. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, he was not Brian Dawkins. I think we need to kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Purple clouds that, but Brian Dawkins, maybe he and Ed Reed are the two best safeties of their generation. Uh, the Troy Palomalu argument's ridiculous to me, but um, Malcolm's just a very good safety. And I think, He'll be remembered as the leader of that Super Bowl team. He'll be remembered as a guy who could do pretty much anything for the majority of his contract. And I think from my perspective, you can leave it at that, right? Because yeah. if you're going to let Jason Peters walk, who's the best Eagles player of the last uh, uh, 10, years. Years. Yeah. 10 years, at least, well, yeah, 15 years, I guess, because it's how long's it been since Dawkins left? Dawkins left in what, 2009? Yeah, uh, it's, I mean, Dawkins was better, so that's true. All yeah, right. Dawkins oh, was la, better. Last 10 years. Last 10 years. Last 10 years. Um, and I'd argue that Peters is one of the top two Eagle, top five Eagles players of the last 40 years. Yeah. Uh, then you can let Malcolm go, who I think's in maybe the top 10 or 15 of that group from a from an on field standpoint. From a yep. Overall standpoint, he's probably a top five most important Eagle player of the last 20 years. So just very interesting. Best free agent signing in the history of the franchise. Um, John Runyon's the only guy that can maybe touch him. Brandon Brooks yeah. is up there too. but Yeah, of course. And uh, Namdi, of course. Yeah, because Terrell Owens was technically a trade, so... <laughs> But yeah, oh, so, right. sorry, you, you <laughs> over my head. Um, <laughs> That's fine. I threw it in there a little casually. So yeah, that I, was like said, I like how you said, yeah, then you kept, kept going. <laughs> well, cause I was just like, I thought you were adding to the point and my brain. Didn't <laughs> right I, I would never you, do that. Initially. I, I think my brain thought you said, and not Namdi. And then I was just, like, <laughs> and then I was like, wait, no, he, I mean, I when, had, you can, when you can sign a guy who eats lunch in his car, you got to do it. Hey, you know what? I, 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 hope, I hope Darius Slay is more friendly to his teammates, you know? Well, he, everybody seems to love the guy. Yeah, like, I know. The, the reaction on Twitter has been pretty wild with people around the league. I mean, it seems like people are really hashtag super stoked for him. Uh, <laughs> All right, but we should we should wrap up on that before we go. I should say the Eagles better hope that this isn't another Golden Tate trade with the Lions, by the way, because it's not that different if you look at the details. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, no, that's fair. But, but the lot, yeah, that one didn't work out very well. Anyway, uh, we'll end on that note. Um, Eagles made a huge trade. Got Darius Slay. They got the corner everyone in the Eagles fan base has always wanted. Um, I'm sure it'll work out perfectly, and nothing will go wrong. So, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 end on that ominous note. Uh, yeah, again, you know, we're we're just doing these quick pods, so we haven't had a chance to like read comments and stuff. But but keep them coming. And <laughs> as Mike's dog starts barking in the back, well, Jack Jack actually wanted to remind me. We haven't plugged Eagles Extra yet. Oh, there you go. Eagles go Extra. Um, you would have heard firsthand uh, 
about the uh, Eagles' interest, further interest in the safety market and defensive ends from the tech service. We're having a good time in there. We're doing all day AMAs through the first week of free agency. Um, you can hit me up with your questions. It's in all of our articles. Um, I have a lengthy Darius Slay grading the deal. I think it's like 1,200 words. I put a lot into it over a very short period of time. Uh, but I, I think you'll really wow. dig it. It's it's probably the, the most instant, uh, thorough analysis of the Slay trade yet. Um, don't mean to toot my own horn. But anyway, Eagles Extra, we're sending you all of our content. We're sending you information you won't get anywhere else. We're sending you information before it hits Twitter. Uh, so sign up. Two weeks free. What do you have to lose other than your sanity from, you know, reading my text messages? <laughs> That's my plug. All right. Again, leave us some comments and reviews. We'll read them when we do like a full-on pod probably sometime next week. Um, if the Eagles do another major move or something interesting, we'll, we'll pop on here again. I hope you guys have been enjoying these. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.